guys, Mayflom here, and I've got some wood veneer paper, and I've got an idea. When do I not have an idea? Well, I've got an idea for a Mother's Day card, and I'm going to stamp this butterfly three times. Three times because, number one, I'm not entirely sure my idea will work. Number two, this will give my scan and cut a couple options to pick from. So I just need to get this onto a mat and we need to scan this into the scan and cut. So we are going to go on to go to scan. And I got my stylus out. This is going to be a direct cut because I want to cut what I have here. So I'm going to say machine. Black grayscale mode is fine and start. Next up, we're going to say okay. Now, it's not recognizing all my butterflies. That's okay. We're going to go like so. Now, I've got a couple choices. What I'm going to do here is see if moving it either way is going to help. It may or may not. Um, the way that my ink stamped, it's not super dark. So, I have ways. Okay, so see, that made it worse. Let's go the other way. This is one of those things where if I have an image, and this is one where it's not a perfectly solid, okay, that didn't work at all. If I've got an image like this and it's not doing great, and I think it can do better, I've got a couple choices. So number one, this one worked perfectly. When I zoom all the way in, look, that's absolutely perfect. If I'm doing a card where I just want one, I can just cut that out. If I'm not happy with it, then I could go in and rescan. I can go on to my stamped images and adjust them a little bit with some pen work so that I can get them where I need them to be. There are a lot of things I can do. I'm going to do a cutting distance of 0.04 and say okay, and then zoom in here and see what that does if that does what I want it to do, and it does not. Do you see how it wants to cut out the antenna separately? That won't work. If I go bigger, okay, so it's not it's not wanting to do what I need it to do. If I do at zero, let me look again. Now, you might wonder, May, why aren't you just hurrying up and show us, showing us, you know, the right way, the way that you're actually going to do it? Um, this is why, because when we're, I know that when you're at home and you're on your scan and cut, you know, sometimes it doesn't go super smooth like it does in the video. So that's really why I wanted to show you this. So I've got a couple options. What I am going to do, though, is I'm going to go all the way back out and do direct cut again. But this time I'm going to change it to color mode and see how that makes a difference. Okay, let's see what happens now. We're going to frame the image once again and say okay. And it just takes a minute that it'll sit here and recognize what's what's on the paper and we'll see. I'm not sure. See, I didn't run this through to make sure if it was dark enough, if I needed to make any adjustments. I didn't do any of that in advance because I wanted you to see this part of the process. Okay, so look at the difference. Okay, look it. It's totally recognizing everything. Um, it's recognizing a little bit extra over here, but not bad. I could try to adjust this. It's kind of a personal choice here, guys. So we could try to adjust this by going in with recognizing fewer colors or recognizing more colors. That's something you can play with here in this mode. And it does take a minute, but it, I mean, honestly, it's usually doesn't take that long. There we go. And I love that it has the bar so I know how long I have to wait. So I could just keep recognizing more or less colors. And in this case, there's still that one little weird little loop. That's okay. Everything's looking really good. Now I can decide, do I want it to have a bit of a distance around it? Do I want it to be right up against the line? I think I want, um, I think I want it right on the line because I think it's going to actually have a little bit of distance when I look because it's cutting around the, those little uh, marks that are on my butterfly. It's going to cut around those little marks, so I feel like, or you can see on the stamp, there's these little guys. It's going to cut around those, so I feel like it's going to already have a little bit of space. So I'm just going to say, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and cut. 
Okay, and I have, I'm going to make sure everything's cool with my machine here. My cord's not under it, making it unstable. Everything is clear in the back. I've got my blade in. And if there were anything else I want to do, like slow down the cut speed, or if there's, whoops, what did I do there? I think I did that. Um, if I wanted to slow down the cut speed or speed it up, um, I'm going to go with two there. Just slow it down a tiny bit just so that I am absolutely certain that it's cutting well. I've got a fresh mat here. I've got everything set. We can go ahead and start cutting. With these cut out, I can pull out my spatula. Now, this is something I wanted to bring up again because I know being able to die cut your own stamps is huge in so many ways. So much creating can go on thanks to that. And something I want to bring up because, you know, if we have a really clean line stamp, it's very clear cut, very easy. Um, the scan and cut recognizes immediately. You get a straight, smooth line. When you have something that's all sketchy and wonky like this, it's not going to be as straight and smooth. It's going to be a little more raggedy. In this case, remember I was telling you this one, for, for whatever reason, it was recognizing something up here as being part of the design. Um, it did not on the other two. The other two, each one it recognized a little differently, which it's very, very sensitive. When you are scanning, it is really focusing in and paying attention to the details. And when it's got a sketchy line, it's going to give you a sketchy cut, which personally, I love it. I love it because it's so funky and these are going to be really fun on a really pretty Mother's Day card. If you don't want it to be a funky line, get out a black pen and make a stronger outline. And it, by doing that, it'll give it a more clear, basically you're telling your machine, hey, uh, this is what I want you to see. If you give your machine something to see, then it can say, oh, okay, I understand and give you what you're looking for. Me, I wanted it kind of funky. So, what I'm going to do now is just take some watercolor. And I think I have some nice reds here. Just going to pull them out here. They're all stuck together. That's okay. And a water brush. And I'm just going to put a little bit of water in there and let it set for just a second. It doesn't take very long. Um, I'm going to show you on this one since this is, I don't know if I'll use all three or not, but what I love is I can, and you can put gesso on this first if you want to make sure the color doesn't spread or you want more control because I already know that I'm going to like uh, how this, I know I'm going to love how this looks. I know this is going to be a lot of fun. So I'm not worried at all about it. If you were, you could do that. And I'm not worried about it spreading on the wood because I've already cut it out. So if it spreads, it's not a problem. We're, we're already cut out. We're already set. So we can do different colors. You can layer on colors. You can do ink. You could do whatever you like. I'm wanting to kind of try to get more of like a, kind of a peachy color. So I'm kind of trying to see if I can do some kind of orangish color with the pinkish red and see what we get. I think it's going to look nice. So I can do all of them the same. I can do some different. Some can be lighter. Some can be darker. And yes, I can mix and match and not worry about it because I can clear it out later and just play and make this all color and fun and pretty. And I didn't have to worry about the cutting. I didn't have to worry about any of that. And then what my plan is... I'm leaving these all kind of funky. Uh, I love the wood grain. I absolutely love the wood grain on these butterflies that turns out so pretty. And I love that I can just, with watercolor, watercolor has really, it's always been a favorite of mine, but uh, it's really become a favorite of mine when working with all these different mediums because it really gives me so many options where I didn't really have as much before, I mean, it gives me so many more options with, you know, if I want things to be a little funky, a little wild, it lets me play and have a whole lot of fun with no fuss. Now, once I'm good with that, I'm going to go and get, let's see, here we go. I'm going to get some nice gold watercolor. And this time what I'm going to do, I'll put a little bit of water in here once again. Okay, just give it a little squeeze. And then what we're going to do is pick some up. And if I run out of water in my water brush, like I 
think I just did. Um, oh, I got another one. Okay, I've got another water brush, so that's okay. If I did run out of water, though, I could just squirt water in there. And then I am going to take this and just tap on my water brush. So I've got gold on there, and then this is just flicking gold onto my butterflies. You could paint it directly as well, and it would add shimmer. I love metallic watercolors for the shimmer, and just such a beautiful depth that they add. And I love that because I've already stamped this, I can get, I can just smear and be messy and it'll be okay. It'll look good. I love that because it's already done. It's already set. And if I want, I can flick on more gold. I could do different colors, but I'm good with where this is at right now. I'm just washing off my water brush so the gold isn't stuck in there and I'm ready to assemble my card. Now we're ready to assemble, and I'm actually going to use hot glue for my card because I feel like it'll work the best. Now my one butterfly that had the big little piece, I just trimmed it off with my scissors. It had the big piece on the side. And I've got a four and a quarter by five and a half folded card here. And I've got a little bit of corrugated cardstock down, and now I've got some twine or string, I guess, here. And I like to use threads and strings and stuff especially on a project like this. And you don't have to be perfect about anything here. Uh, we're just having a little bit of fun and I'm going to use hot glue because I feel like it'll work better. Ah, if I can get it to, there we go, get it to let go. And then one at a time, just place my butterflies and I'm just putting the hot glue in the middle. And I liked hot glue for this because it'll hold it down really, really strong. However, it won't cause any kind of, I mean, there won't be any problems with it or anything like that. Um, it'll, it'll be totally fine here. And then I've just, you see how I've got my string kind of going here and there. Um, let's see, I like that one right there. Once I know where I like a butterfly, just a lump of hot glue there. The hot glue is going to do a couple of things. It's going to hold down my strings, but it's also going to hold down my butterfly. And then I want this little one of a kind here. Just want to make sure I've got, I want room for that, but I want this as well. So I need to make sure where, how I'm going to put this down if I'm going to. I think I'm going to do this part last, but I do see where I want to put that. So go ahead again with the hot glue. And get this last guy on here. I do want everybody to fit on the card because this will be a card that I mail. I don't want anything falling off the edges. And then once I've got that down, and this is fun because there's some motion to, you know, to the threads. Uh, they're, they're able to kind of uh, flutter around there, but they're all tacked down. I love that. Okay, am I sentiment some hot glue once again? Could you do this without hot glue? Yes. However, I say however because it would be a little different, okay? If we do it without hot glue, you're going to have to put some weights on stuff. You're going to have to hold things down. It's going to take a little more time, which is not a problem. Uh, it's, just, it's just something to be aware of um, that, you, you know, there's just a little more work with it. Now, I'm going to take again with the water brush and the gold watercolor and just do some fine little flecks of gold. This just kind of brings everybody together, you know, just kind of ties everything up. And then it takes it from being a plain cardstock background to having a little bit of pizzazz. And finally, if I wanted to, um, and I'm not really sure that I do, but if I wanted to, I could then take, like, say, some black ink. Yeah, I do think I will. I, I think I will. Um, and just kind of rub it along the edges for some contrast. I do love a card with good contrast. And we could add more embellishments if we wanted, but guess what? We don't really need to. Our watercolored wood veneer butterflies here, one of a kind. And there's three different ones here. This is going off for Mother's Day. I know it doesn't say Mother's Day on the front, but I don't need it to. I can add my sentiment inside and mail it off. Questions, comments, suggestions, requests, anything at all, you can always shoot me an email or leave me a comment on my YouTube channel. I'll see you next time.